Yeah. Good evening and welcome to the July 18th, 2016 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I think I'm going to go ahead and try all to right. roll here. What the heck? Make myself useful. <laughs> Ms. Saunders? Ms. Oglis? Here. Mr. Beely? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. Mazur? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Woods? Here. Thank you. Note that in the absence of Ms. Saunders, Mr. Beely will be a voting member. Uh, Excuse me? Or? Nope. He's All right. Still alternate. <laughs> ah. Come on. All right. So, that's so close. Good try, though. Yeah, that's what happens when I try to make me secretary. Do it all. <laughs> Overstep my bounds. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. I tried, Roger. Um, next item is the approval of minutes from the June 6th and June 27th, 2016 meetings. Move to approval. Motion. Second. 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 Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Quick housekeeping note, item number eight on the agenda, Commercial Place LLC Enterprise Business Park has been tabled at the request of the applicant, so we will not have that one this evening. Next item on the agenda, Paul Russo requests sketch plan review for 11 Willowdale Road, Assessor's Map U39, Lot 41. Dave, would you like to introduce this one? Sure. Um, this is an item that planning board members may be somewhat familiar with due to a recent zone change uh, for this property. Um, the property recently was changed from a B3 zone, which is a commercial zone, to an R4 zone, which is more compatible with the surrounding neighborhood up Willowdale Road as you sort of get away from Route 1. Um, the site, just for way of background, was back in 2010 granted a uh, site plan approval for sort of a office development that never transpired, never took place. Um, and now with the recent zone change, the applicant, as I already said bef uh, before you, for a subdivision application or sketch plan of a su subdivision application will be putting together shortly um, for five units on the site. Should have received some staff comments. Sketch plan again is an informal discussion, opportunity for the applicant to introduce the concept to the board and for the board to flag any uh, areas of interest or concern moving forward. A couple of items that staff flagged um, will be with regards to ensuring that the net residential acreage calculation is done. Um, and then just uh, recognizing that there are, is a uh, natural resource in the area and really trying to um, give consideration to appropriate stormwater management approaches that might that would minimize um, impacts to the resource uh, such as low impact development. A um, couple other staff comments but I think those are the principal items and with that I turn it back to you. Thanks Jay and I'll turn it over to the applicant's representative. Frank, uh, thank you Mr. Chairman. I'm Bill Thompson with BH2M Engineers, project manager. I'm here for Paul Russo, the owner applicant. As Jay uh, indicated in his uh, opening summary, um, we were actually back here in 2008, I believe it was in 2010, for approval uh, as a business use commercial, uh, which was the underlying zone at the time. Uh, the small building in the front um, at that time was residential. Uh, Paul converted that to a business use, and then we had a, um, an approval uh, for, for that with parking, associated parking utilities. And then we went and did a uh, phase two, which I have a drawing I'll put up in a minute, uh, just to show you that this site did undergo uh, a full-scale engineering, uh, utility design, landscaping, uh, stormwater, and this design is is different but but similar. We're utilizing the same same space that uh, that we have. It's a 1.7 acre lot, um, and again we went through the uh, the zone change from B3 to R4, which now allows Paul to develop what he feels is a, uh, a demand out there for residential. So the front building will be converted uh, and upgraded to uh, a single uh, residential with a two-car garage added to it, which is shaded. <coughs> and the other two buildings are duplexes, uh, two-story, uh, fairly large footprint, a uh, two-car garage access off the front. So the parking requirements uh, are met uh, with the garage uh, space, which is associated with each building. 
Uh, setbacks, of course, with the business zone um, inhibited uh, or prevented us from having um, the development. I need a little pen to work. We had a higher uh, side setback given the two zones. We had a residential zone and a business zone. So that gives us a little more room in the front. Um, as the previous uh, approval, we still have the one access in. That's a 24-foot wide access drive. We do have two spaces on the end, clear on the, on the end for snow removal. And uh, again, each of the duplexes will have, have their car, uh, car garages. In Jay's memo, too, he just uh, highlights the things that uh, need to be done, which you know, we're well aware of. Uh, full engineering, I have letters going out to the sanitary district, the water company, uh, to um, assure that utilities are available. They were available for the last approval in 2010, so the uh, assumption anyway until we follow up on it is that uh, there will not be any issues for this. Um, again, the, the site uh, in the area of development is, is fairly consistent grades. Uh, we do have a stream protection uh, zone and we also have the shoreland zone, which we will stay out of. So this area here is the uh, available space for development. So we'll, uh, again, we'll go through the grading stormwater. We'll update all the old reports. Uh, the stormwater report will change a little bit, um, but uh, all those will be submitted uh, at our next uh, application that, that comes into the board. Uh, full details following your subdivision regulations uh, to bring it, uh, bring it to the next step. So uh, again, we don't see any, any uh, issues where this site did uh, undergo an approval. I'll just show you briefly. <coughs> This is about what the building will look like with a two-car garage on the front, dormers uh, with bedrooms up above, uh, and the uh, lights of uh, windows on the end. And then <coughs> in 2010, as I indicated, the first approval in 08 was just to bring this building into a, uh, a, a business use. Uh, we had some parking associated with it, and the entrance was upgraded. Then in 2010, uh, a proposed building for commercial use was added here, associated parking, and uh, again, just the one access in. Stormwater was managed, collected, and discharged and treated at this uh, level spreader. So our building area is very similar, um, except we do have the different setback now given the residential zone. Um, so we, we see utilities you know, being connected and, and utilized uh, very, uh, very similar to what was done in 2010. So again, uh, that's my presentation. If I'll entertain comments from the board, and we can uh, go back and move move it fo forward. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Roger, do you have anything? Uh, actually, I, I don't at the moment. I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's all yours. Um, I just want to ask about the uh, the concept of the uh, net residential mm -hmm. that has been done? It has been, correct. We have received... I have not submitted it's, it's that. It's shown as a concern. No. Would, you, would you address that, please? Because uh, it's shown as up on the um, um, yep. staff comments. Yep. We, haven't, we haven't seen the net residential calculation. Um, we've, we've done it, but not submitted as part of the application. So it will support the five, actually almost six units. So as part of the formal application, we'll need to see that to be sure that this can support that. This is just a, a sketch plan at this point. Okay. I'm with you. Um, looking at your drawing, one of the things that it says in our staff comments is that the stream protection district is not clearly labeled. Will you show me from the um, western tip, the gray, where the stream protection? This, this kind of shows it better. I'm okay. It didn't get carried through, but the stream protection comes up here at basically 75 feet off of the stream, and then this setback comes off of the stream. So it's kind of a, you know, a triangular um, segment. So on this one here, stream protection, it wasn't shown here because this is in the shoreland zone. Right. Of duplication okay. Of no building allowed. Is the setback the same for the shoreland as it is for stream protection? Um, in terms of the stream protection, the 75-foot setback, I, I guess I'd have to take a look at those details. Um, I don't recall offhand, but the, the, sh the shoreland overlay is a 250-foot overlay. That's not necessarily where you can't build. It's just a matter of how much impervious area. Uh, okay. But there is still a stream setback of 75 okay. feet, so that, that would hold. That would dictate to our 
Okay. Okay. My only um, it's not a concern. The only thing that I would just like to to uh, take a look not take a look at but make a statement about is the um, the, the concept here that due to existing grade changes, erosion and sediment control and overlay stability of the site will be a focus of reviews once we get to the point of grading. Um, I've been out to that area and it does have some grading issues. So. Um, and, and again, just to uh, what we accomplished back in 2010, uh, same site is the stream, the stream zone up here. Everything was, was accomplished in here. The grades in through this area here are really two, three percent of really quite okay. moderate. Uh, when you get out into the back, uh, you can see how the, the, the contour is carried down. Uh, but, you know, with, with the, the, the real, as you can see from the contours, the, the, the more severe, steeper slopes really are out in the area that will not be disturbed. I guess that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Ron? Well, <clears throat> my colleagues seem to hit on most of it. Um, I do have a question. What's on either side? We have a residential use here, a residential use shown on the, well, shown on the old plan, which is the residential here and the residential, oh, excuse me, right here. And then the Scarborough Sanitary District will lead from there up to the one. Is there going to be one driveway for both structures? That's correct. One curb cut. Okay. Um, and <coughs> what about snow removal for that area? Yeah, I, I mean, there's, there's nothing at the end to prevent uh, the plowing activity, just to carry the, this area here, you know, both sides, uh, actually in, in between buildings here, but primarily um, at the end of the pavement, which logically where they push snow to uh, clear the driveway. Okay. And a, another bit of uh, sort of just uh, uh, advice, since it's become a hot button, is to be sure that to uh, reach out to the water and sanitary departments. Yes, they'll let us go on out tomorrow. I want to wait get comments tonight. So uh, that it's before the fact and not after. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Thanks, Ron. Nick? <laughs> is this going to be eventually a public road? The no, vision? no, that's to be just a drive to serve these five units. Do you have any cons Do you have any intent, or have you met with the fire department about turning around in there, or anything of that mm -hmm. nature? Not yet. Nope. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just um, I know from I believe this previous discussion is it more of a hammerhead there at the end, isn't there? I mean, mm -hmm. typically, just something That'll to be, be aware of. Outside of that, I got sure. I'm um, I'm all out of comments. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. Uh, not much more to add, except um, the, there's no driveway into the garages, I see. Uh, it's the garages are within the building, so the, the, the cars will be in here, in here, and they'll back out and come out. So, so the, um, they don't park in front of the garage. Right, so you won't have any parking in front of the garage because that would That's prohibit correct. the right of way. I'll uh, handle internally. Yeah. And um, Ron touched on it on both sides. It's, is, is the zoning residential on both sides as well? Yes, it is. It is. Okay. And this was B3 at one time? Oh, I'm, I'm being corrected, yes. Is B3? B3. This is still B3. Okay. Mm. Right. All right. Well, I think that's it. Uh, wish you luck. Look forward to seeing you. Correct. Yeah, that's all I have. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Yeah, I don't have too much to add. It hasn't already been covered. Um, we've got a lot of the usual items that we look, look to see coming out of sketch plan review. Um, net rest calculation is obviously the biggest one. We talked about stormwater, grading, sanitary district, getting input from the fire department on the turnaround. Um, some sort of housekeeping labeling type things that noted in the staff comments. Uh, do you anticipate that you'll be back for our next meeting with a full proposal or? My client says yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Hope it's easy to Well, I hope so. August 8th, I think. It's uh, pretty uh, pretty quick. Sure. Yeah, it, it is a quick turnaround. But. Okay. Well, I don't think I have, uh, again, anything else to add. And
you know what the homework is, and we'll look for it next time. All right, thanks. Thank you. <coughs> Item number five, Good Pain LLC requests site plan amendment review for 362 Payne Road, <coughs> Assessor's Map R38, Lot 4. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this application is before the board uh, to convert an existing non-conforming residential house in the B3 uh, from a residential use, as I just noted, to a uh, small commercial office space. Um, as I know, this is in the B3 district, and one of the items that staff uh, noted in our comments was that uh, the outdoor storage on the site does require Board of Appeals approval, which was granted uh, just this past uh, Wednesday, I think it was, just last week. Um, so that has been accomplished. Um, with that, now the applicant is to here before this board for a site plan um, approval to so go through the site plan review process. Um, given that the site is an existing developed site, there, you know, um, we need to still work our way through those standards. Uh, what you'll notice in our staff comments is uh, really seeking a bit of plan clarity, particularly around sort of the existing site and the proposed site, and on that point, just want to make note that also staff noticed last week that the application um, materials and pictures that were provided that were taken on June 20th, there's actually been some of the site work has been accomplished on site already. Um, and so, you know, just for, just so everyone sort of understands what's been going on on the site. Um, and so the applicant might want to touch on, on what's been done and what all that means. But uh, essentially, you know, one of the questions staff had was there's a discussion on the site plan about an existing gravel area. But when you look at the aerial photos, it really looks like lawn. So really trying to understand what was that existing material that was in that area and how does that differ from what is proposed and or what's actually in now. Um, so those are some of the clarifying questions we'd look for. Um, another issue is the applicant is seeking to maintain a gravel area for some of the vehicle movement areas, which is permitted provided the planning board approve that. Um, typically, the ordinance seeks for all uh, uh, vehicle movement areas in our commercial zones to be paved. Um, but if the board's comfortable with a particular use using gravel, they need to demonstrate that they're meeting a certain um, uh, standard for that. Um, Let's see, another issue that uh, we'll need to uh, address is um, there's been an, an existing you know, tra uh, trailer, 18-wheeler type trailer on site um, that's been there for a number of years. Um, but what our ordinance talks about is these are <laughs> considered uh, by our ordinance non-temporary use of an accessory storage container. And there's performance standards around those. So uh, the applicant will need to demonstrate that they're either meeting those standards or if the trailer's been, was on site, the ordinance says, for 60 days prior to May 20th, 1997, I think it was, if they can demonstrate that, then it's sort of outside of the planning board's review and it's just an existing nonconformance that can remain. So, details around that. Um, I think those, those are sort of the primary issues. We, we Staff identified a few other items, again, really around plan clarity and, um, but I think that's, I, spoken enough on it, and I'll turn it back to you, and happy to answer questions as we go. Great. Thanks, Jay, and uh, I'll hand it to the applicant. Thank you. Um, I'm Steve Blaze with Blaze Civil Engineers, uh, right down the road here, and I'm here tonight with uh, Bill Soul, owner of Atop Chimney Company, and uh, Jordan Young, uh, who's been at our company two months uh, out of UNH, so we're happy to have him here. Um, made him blush a little bit. <laughs> I uh, just wanted to address the, kind of the first thing that work has been going on. Bill, Bill purchased the property, uh, what, two weeks ago? Three weeks ago. Um, lease is coming up on his current property. He's currently in South Portland, wants to move his business to Scarborough. Went ahead and bought the property and, um, you know, went into the code enforcement office and asked if he could start fixing it up, which the answer was yes. Um, he asked if he could refresh the gravel or put in gravel. They said yes. So. There has been work going on, uh, none of it intentionally done without the site plan application, uh, you know, being being approved. So I just wanted to kind of get that out there. Um, so the plan is uh, a top chimney has three employees. There's um, they mostly work off site. Uh, not many customers coming to the site. It's more more on site. 
Every couple weeks, Bill, there's a delivery of um, chimney liners or bricks. Um, so you guys tell me, would you rather look up there or over here? Both. Both? <laughs> You you, so if you're going to point, you point to whichever one you like. Okay. Um, I'll try this first here. But I do have some photos I want to show you. That's why I plugged into the okay. screen. Um, so as Jay uh, pointed out, we uh, got um, we, we received approval for uh, outdoor storage, uh, which is in Scarborough any storage of uh, in, for a commercial use, including vehicles. So what we have approved is the storage of four vehicles, um, and you'll see those parking uh, parking spaces here, including an accessible space. We've also added some. The long-term storage is really for right now. There's two vehicles that stay, work vehicles that stay over the weekend. So that's over 24 hours. They're typically on the road um, every workday. Bill drives his truck home, so that that one doesn't require the 24-hour storage. Um, the council, the uh, zoning board did suggest we get four approved for future expansion, so that's why we have four approved. Um, don't need them right away, but be nice to have in the future. The structures are existing, and I'm sure you've all driven by Payne Road uh, quite a number of times. It wasn't in a pretty condition. Bill has been fixing it up. I'll show you pictures of that. Um, we do have, uh, we did run some turning templates to make sure uh, it's an SU-30 is the delivery truck they use to make sure they can get in, get out, um, you know, no backing into Payne Road. We have looked at site distances here. There's plenty of site distance on Payne Road. It is hard to make a left turn. There's uh, no doubt about that. Um, we felt it's a small enough operation um, to warrant any kind of traffic analysis or, or anything. The storage trailer Jake talked about is right back here at the back of the site. Um, we did look at the we did look at the ordinance. It could be grandfathered. It's been there before. What what date was that, Jay? It was uh, 98. 98. So we looked back on Google Earth, and yeah, 98, there's a trailer there. Hard to make out. It's a little grainy, but um, then I, I went through the standard with Bill of what, what we need to do to keep it, and, you know, that's, that's probably not going to work. So we do plan to get rid of it. Um, but the current plan is to get the business moved in. So all of Bill's efforts and his son and his wife and his workers have been to fix up this to get to move the business in short order. The barn, which doesn't look pretty right now, um, or in the storage container, we'd like to move that, um, preferably not right away. Maybe, uh, I don't know if we could do a year. Uh, I don't know what kind of, because it's going to be another project. Um, I'm getting some funny looks, but, um, <laughs> you know, we. We want to figure out what the heck we're going to do with the barn and what we're going to do with all the contents and, and in the storage container. Just what, what are we going to do? So that's up for discussion. We're, we're, we're glad to hear ideas. Um, the paved portion of the site as it exists today is right here, is the, is the gray area. Um, and this, you'll see on, on the plans I submitted, we pointed out the existing gravel area. So. What we did is, when we first looked at the site, we thought, well, there's a barn here. And it all showed up as grass from a little bit behind this pavement. So we thought, it just seems kind of weird that there was a barn here and there was no way to access it. So we looked back historically. I'll, I'll show you some photos on that. Um, let me... Where were those, Jordan? <laughs> yeah, right here. Um, if we look back at, okay, so that is uh, 2008. We're right here. Let me uh, zoom in a little bit here. Th this is uh, this is us. You can see there's a bunch of vehicles around, um, and they're using that site. Does it look like gravel? I I don't know, but let's look back a little bit more. Um, let me get back to full size. You, let, you guys let me know if you want me to zoom in some more. But where's my page down? Page down. No, nope. I'll scroll. That is back in uh, 2002. And you can see there's even more stuff on the site. The, the, the use of the site has been, you know, less and less the back of the property as the years go on. And then I'll, I'll take you back to, uh, what was the date in Back to the Future? Oh, sorry. Um, I'll take you back to, 
just black and white. I mean, you, you can kind of see it was used, you know, it was always like a dirt kind of beat up, kind of gravel, kind of impervious. So that's where we got it. And, and what Jordan and I did is we went out with shovels and a, and a, and a probe. We went to feel around where the edge of the gravel used to be. So that's what we were kind of, I don't know, trying to grandfather, if you will. Um, if we were to say that that was all lawn today, which maybe in retrospect we should have done, um, it adds, the gravel we're adding is 0.06 acres, is what it comes down to. Um, and just to put it in perspective, I, let me see here. I'm just going to pop up um, just to see the site kind of in context to everything around it. Um, so, you know, that, that that's our site right there. That You know, that's a trailer back here. Do you see my cursor all right? That's the trailer back here. That's the main building and the barns right here. Um, the drainage all kind of falls away to the back of the site. Um, and... It ends up going through this huge culvert here under the turnpike. Um, oh. Just just to give uh, kind of next to the golf course. Oh, I lost it. Sorry, I always get lost in Google Earth. Anyways, just to give you a little bit of context of, of what we're talking about, we didn't mean um, the, the impervious area is kind of. Uh, not a huge deal. We were just trying to map out where it used to be. So in the end, if we were to count that impervious area, we're decreasing by a little bit. If you don't, we're increasing by 0.06 is what it kind of boils down to. Um, we show the snow storage area uh, to the left there and some landscaping. Uh, in the front, we have hemlocks just to try to break the view from, uh, from Payne Road. Um, we are proposing a sign here with a little bit of ornamental kind of grasses in front of it. Um, I'll show you quickly some pictures of what we've been doing out there. I'll, sh I'll show you some before and afters. Um, so the befores, you see a lot of them right in your application. Um, and this is kind of a good shot. You see the kind of blue styrofoam. And, um, oops, not that one. And here, here were the other ones that were included in the application. Um, here's a structure right here, left and right. And what we have today, what Bill's done in three weeks is a... Uh, one. That's the light. He's kind of fixed up the, the boards, painted it up. Um, kind of the look he's going for. And again, we're trying to move into the main structure first. The barn is a, is a another project. I mean, uh, we're, we're we're looking for input on that, but we we think if we do anything significant on the barn, we'll be back in front of you guys for for another meeting. But um, and this is just a shot of the back, kind of where the air the water flows to. Um, that steel thing, I think, I think that was the guy's shooting range. Uh, I think we're getting that pulled out of there, right? <laughs> and there's some you'll see like some miscellaneous stuff around the site that. Bill's hiring contractors, or I don't know who you're dealing with, but they're coming in to get in the metal and, and, and get it off site. There was a lot of stuff there, and it's taken a while to kind of sort through it all. Um, so that, I think, pretty much wraps it up. Um, we're glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, before we go to board discussion, we do have the opportunity for public comment on this item. So if anyone's interested, come on up. All right, seeing none. We'll move on. I did just want to say uh, for this item and the following two items on the agenda, um, which are site plan amendment uh, applications, we do have draft motions for approval which have been provided by staff. I just wanted to make clear that that in no way presupposes that we'll definitely be voting for approval, but staff's made those available should we reach that point as a board. So, um, uh, you know, some may have more loose ends than others. So I just wanted to make that note. And um, Mike, would you like to start the board discussion? Uh, sure. I'm trying to f place where this is exactly. What What is next door? Like, oh, sorry. To the left. Yeah, I meant to say that. So to the left is Ron Fence. Oh. Yep. And to the right is where ATOP moved in, I'd say, I don't know, a couple of years ago. And then they kind of put in a, I think, not ATOP, sorry, A plus, kind of confusing the A's, A plus party rental. 
moved in to the right. So it's the same side as forest fence? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And that's to the left? That's to the left if you're looking from the road, okay. correct. Uh, do you have a uh, proposed rendition of the sign? We don't at this okay. time. Actually, you did have one, didn't you? Yeah. Do you have a, do you, can, you, can you tell me what you plan on doing? It's, it's going to look a little bit like a chimney with a sign hanging off it. Um, right? Yeah. Come on up and uh, introduce yourself if you'd like to speak. Thank Bill, you. Bill Soule. Um, right. I'm hoping to get approval for a, a uh, the pole of the sign. It'll be just a, uh, it, you know, it'll be a chimney and then the, the sign hanging off the chimney. Um, that's what I'm hoping to do, hoping to get approval of. Hmm. But that's a, that's a whole other permit. Yeah. I just think it would be a, a good, you know, a top chimney would be a good. Right. No, I get I get the connection, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I'll have, to, I'll have to see it before I, because right away I'm, I'm, you know, I'm thinking a little bit maybe too much, too <coughs> much Vegas like, you know, but I'm sure, I'm sure it'll look fine. But I, again, I'd like to see that, you know, when you get around to it. Um, Right off, I, I don't have any problem with this gravel area that you're talking about as far as maintaining it and adding gravel. I, I don't see how that, that, that would be an issue. Um, are you going to renovate the building? It, it, I mean, are you going to take that building that we saw and... You know, yeah, yeah, we, is, we, I mean, as far as renovation goes, we're going we're to keep the that board and bat siding mm -hmm. for, for this year. Um, and then we've, we've painted three sides of it so far. Um, as far as the inside, we've you know we've fixed up a lot of things. Um, it, it, but no, no, not nothing new or anything like that. But just as far as doors and just about right. every every uh, uh, you know piece of uh, washboard and stuff and, and mm -hmm. yeah, just the, the inside. But as far as the kitchen and stuff like that goes, that that was in pretty good shape. Um, the cellar's in fairly decent shape. So, um, but as far as Renovating anything else? No, I mean it's, it's going to have to be the existing building. Right and there, so. and can you? Uh, and again, this is going to be mostly uh, for office use. It'll be yeah, strictly and for office and, and then storage and then, of materials. Yeah, down down cell will be will be uh, storage and materials, which is we don't have very much to be honest with you. Oh, you don't you don't have a lot of masonry materials? No, no, we, we don't build chimneys. We service them, so we don't have a lot of bricks. Very few bricks. Like we we'll probably have a hundred bricks on hand at a time, just when we have to replace a few bricks here and there. Um, the and main can, things are chimney caps, some, some um, you know, liners, uh, and, and a, a little bit of masonry material, but not very much. It's going to easily fit in the cellar. Now, 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 you said that um, you went to the ZBA, did you? And, and uh, they um, they approved four spaces on the site plan to four store? We were, we were going for two, and they suggested we would go for four in case of an expansion so we wouldn't have to go and get approval again. So this has nothing to do with uh, where you would locate any outdoor storage, like no. as far as materials No, there go. shouldn't be any outdoor storage. There, there won't be any. Oh, okay. No. All right, good. Um, any new lighting? Uh, there's going to be, uh, no, not, well, there'll be new lights, but at the same place where they are, and I think we're going to add one, uh, Steve and I had talked about, out back. Yeah, I'll show you yeah. where, uh, yeah. I'll show you the lighting that, that we're proposing. It's a fully, uh, we call it cutoff fixture. Um, I mean, that's the model right there. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. That, that's the new ones that are going in. And we have them a uh, couple in the front of the building, one on the side, um, not towards Bain Road. Actually, there's one towards Bain Road. Um, just at the, there's a, a little entrance there. And I just took a little shot of inside. It, mm -hmm. It's like 100, 100, uh, 100 watts max is what it takes. It's, it's, it's not a big light. <coughs> um, now, although it probably can't be seen from the road, this trailer, is that true? It, it, it can. can be. Looking, yeah. I'm encouraged that I heard you say that eventually your intention is to remove it. Um, uh, now, for staff, is it, is it within our purview to um, condition any kind of approval with a um, with a time frame that the trailer can be removed? Sure. Um, so, what I had heard the applicant talk about is the potential for one year, and I think that would actually work well with the town's current um, setup for site plan approvals. When a site does get an approval and once they start building um, and they look for their certificate of occupancy, we do a site inspection, be sure everything's built the way it's supposed to be. And if there are a few things that aren't done, sometimes it can be landscaping depending sure. on the type. 
sort of the non-essential items, right. so to speak. Um, and um, but we will establish a performance guarantee that's good for one year. So I would say, you know, if, if he thinks that you know removing the trailer in one year is something you could do, then we could have the site plan reflect trailer to be removed, simply stated as that. And then when he comes to seek his CEO, we'll just sort of say, okay, a trailer's still here, okay. sort of, and we can deal with it sort of as, as an administrative element. And again, that's yeah, if that works for the applicant. If that works for the applicant, exactly. I would suggest maybe we can add that as a condition. Um, I think that's about it. I don't want to take up any more time. I'm sure my colleagues have some good questions to ask. Is that is that looking good for you folks? The um, the trailer within a year. Yeah, good. Okay. As far as the performance care, uh, performance guarantee, what what kind of form would that take? That's either letter of credit or an escrow. Um, okay. So. A letter of credit. Okay. Yep. And we can the amount is sort of depending sure, it has on to be sort decided of the on. right. Yep. Um, if I if I might before we go to other board members, there just one point of clarity I heard in that discussion was around the outdoor storage. Yeah. So there is an outdoor storage area about a 10 by 10 or 15 by 15 area that the board of appeals did approve. Um, so a small materials area. So there is. That's, that's okay. correct. And can you um, point on the map where that is? I'm very confused. Uh, yes, I certainly can. Yeah. So what you'll see on your plan is th this is um, sorry I should have pointed this out. We did modify this plan a little bit from what was submitted um, in response to comments and in response to the approval we got at the zoning board. We got approved for four parking parking spaces as we as we've said for over 24 hour storage. We also got approval for storage and you'll see it right on on, on your drawings for outdoor storage and dumpster right here. Um, the fence. Uh, we just it didn't work for the site in this area. We were putting it here to try to avoid a fence to keep the views from Payne Road. But with the fence here and with all the activity we, we think goes might go on in the future between these two buildings, it just wasn't a good place for it. So what we ended up doing is just saying, fine, we don't really need outdoor storage anyways. It was it's kind of like a bonus. If we were gonna need to go to the ZBA, we thought let's try to get a little outdoor storage anyways, but um Turns out we, we ended up moving the dumpster here in this area. We ran the turning templates on that. I have those on the screen if you'd like to see them. Um, so that kind of sums that up. This approval, for site plan approval, will have no outdoor storage other than vehicles. Okay. And the dumpster would be to the left over there. Okay. Yeah, to the left, fully enclosed in a uh, with gates with a uh, cedar fence. All right, very good. I guess I guess my only hesitation is the sign. You know, I I mean, um, I'm excited to you know see that you're taking over the property and you have a lot of sounds like you have a lot of energy and enthusiasm to make it make it better than it is today. Um, I just you know with visions of a sign taking on the image of a chimney kind of makes me step back a little bit, but uh, I'll withhold judgment till I see it. But thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Mike. Nick, I don't have much to add. Ron? Yeah. Um, the barn is empty, right? Is the barn in empty now? No, it has, it has some stuff in from the previous owner. Okay, are you going to leave it or are you just going to get rid of it? I'm getting rid of it. Okay, because what I'm hearing is the barn is not in the best of shape, right? Okay, it's not a hazard. Step to the microphone, please. Thank it's you. not a hazard to your staff, right? No, no, okay. and, and before we do anything, we'll be. I'll be doing some work on it. Okay, and how many staff members do you have? Uh, I have three staff members. Okay, besides yourself. Wait, my wife and I and three and, and three employees. Yeah. Okay, and so four spaces is going to be enough? Yeah. Well, the, the four spaces were overnight parking. Two overnight parking is all we need right now. Um, at the uh, Board of Appeals, they suggested we, go, we went for four in case of expansion. We wouldn't have to come back for, uh, you know, go through the... the the board again to get an extra parking spot. So it would right now the most would park overnight would be two. Um, and, um, j just to clarify, uh, Ron, is we uh, we saw that comment in the staff comments and, and we wanted to think about it some more. So what we showed here is overnight parking for you know when an employee comes in and switches to the company car, how many times are they going to park to the side? pull out the truck, leave, and then park back in the spot. Usually doesn't happen, so we wanted to plan for that. So 
So we, we showed a couple um, tandem parked vehicles here for overnight parking next to the barn. So that's kind of how we're feeling. We think operationally four spots will be more than enough, but then we have some over the weekend storage of vehicles or they might be stored there every night. But that, um, you know, future access drive to the barn when we might may use it is going to be right here. Okay, but the barn's coming down, isn't it? And sometimes they're going to be renovated. R right. I mean, right now it's how much of a project is it? Is it a teardown? Is it not? Those are all questions that have to be answered. Um, and Bill's already talked to some people, but um, really focusing on getting the business moved first. Just if I could, uh, the plan depicts the barn staying. So right now it's sort of, if the board is comfortable, I mean, right now the proposal as staff sort of sees it and on record is for the barn to remain. Um, so I think that's the way the board should look at it unless we're hearing that's going to come down. Okay, and then uh, bear with me. As the application uh, that we received, is the parking adequate as far as where and how based on what we just heard? In other words, switching from, you know. Sure, there's sort of two, two components to the parking that we're talking about. One is the parking for the office space to meet the town's minimum standard, which um, would require four spaces. Um, and so I think those are the four spaces that are really designated on the plan. And then as has been talked about, there's this outdoor storage component that our ordinance defines as the keeping of commercial vehicles in, one, in, in a location for more than 24 hours. So when staff was meeting with the applicant, sort of said, well, over the weekend, where do those vehicles go? they stay on site. Well, okay, that's 48 hours per our ordinance. We need to deal with those as outdoor storage. So I think those are the locations that are being depicted sort of in front of the barn and, and sort of that's the distinction between the type of parking areas. So yes, I would say in, in staff's estimation, they're meeting the town's minimum standard for the business and depicting those four codified parking spaces. Now, as the applicant sort of said, there aren't customers that come to the site, so I think it also um, gives the board some um, ability to, the ordinance gives the board some ability to sort of consider parking when, depending on the use, um, those things, you know, can be demonstrated that can, business can be carried on adequately. So okay. hopefully and, that helps. And this meets fire requirements, right? Fire department didn't have any issues. Okay, thank you. Um, the, uh, Container for trash and so forth, dumpster. That's going to be enclosed. Uh, correct. In a what? Okay. In a Thank you. Um, and I also, would, you know, would like to see. We, there is a design, a design ordinance for signs, so you're going to, you know, just keep that in mind. That needs to be yep. approved. And then uh, staff also mentioned the fact that uh, uh, even though there was this feeling that. It, the application didn't fall within design standards that according to staff it does. Is that correct? Well, I guess that, that that's ultimately at the uh, discretion of the board. Um, but yes, it does still require design standard review uh, and approval. Again, the design standards sort of talk about renovations and additions to buildings separate, different, and, and distinct from a new building. So I guess, you know, the, the question to the board is, is the work you know, uh, as the pictures depicted, the site was pretty tired previously. Um, so if the board's comfortable with the work that's been done, that's wonderful. If the board feels that more needs to be done, then we can see how it fits within those design standards for renovation. Okay. And my next question, snow removal, is that going to require any additional tree removal or so forth and so on? Uh, no. We uh, we adjusted that from the, from the submittal. Um, You'll see on this plan here uh, that the, the tree line went on after the snow removal line went on. So we, we've adjusted that. There's plenty of room to store snow on the site. We just so we adjusted it. Uh, no trees will come down to store snow. Great. And my last question, Angel, is any of this fall within your preview too, as far as uh, storm water and so forth? My my comments are in staff comments too. It's combined. So um, we looked at 
Mm -hmm. that, and, and I guess that was part of the questioning on what's gravel and what's not gravel, what's lawn, what's gotcha. all of that, um, and trying to determine where those limits are. And I guess with that said, the storage trailer you're talking about removing is yeah. pervious. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and, sure. and really looking at what, what those square footages are. I mean, you talked about <coughs> somewhere between 2,500 square feet that you're increasing, is that, um, that something? I calculated it before I came over, it was 0 0.06 acres. Mm -hmm. That's if there's no grandfather gravel at all, which, I mean, there clearly was some, Right. but I don't know how clear the line is. <laughs> so there, that was the question, I guess. I didn't. We didn't have those kind of answers if okay. we're coming tonight. If you're happy, I'm happy. Uh, that's all I have. Thanks, Ron. Susan? Okay. Um, you received approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals for, well, it's confusing because in some places it's called temporary and in some places it's not called temporary. But anyway, I understand that basically what it does is give you an opportunity to leave your vehicles overnight and it's an established place for that. But while you were there, you also got permission to put your dumpster in that place that you were no longer going to be putting it. My question about that is how does that relate to what the ZBA said? Yeah, so a couple of things on, on that. So the ZBA, what the ZBA approved was on the plants that you have, there's two sort of squares it, right. in between the two buildings. Mm -hmm. One was for, it, it denoted for outdoor storage, the other's for dumpster location. Dumpster isn't considered outdoor storage, that's part and parcel of a site plan review process. So what's the outdoor storage for? So the outdoor storage was they had a 10 by 10 or 15 by 15 area that the board approved, or the Board of Appeals, I'm sorry, approved, but the applicant's now saying upon contemplation they don't want it. So my so question is how do we do that legally? I mean, we don't want to leave it there as a possibility if it's not going to be used. I would say um, the Board of Appeals approved it. The applicant, much like a planning board approval, it will expire. So if the applicant doesn't sort of put it as part of their site plan approval, if they, let's say, they, they, uh, we move forward with the plan as proposed without that outdoor storage area, and then two months later he says, gosh, I wish I had it, he would be back okay, before I this understand, board. But if it isn't used within a certain area, if uh, time frame, it does expire. Correct. The Board that of that Appeals that approvals, I think, are good for six months or okay, something to that Okay, thank effect. you. That answers that question. I appreciate it. Um, the sign approval has to come to us, you know that. I'm looking at the pictures and they're, they're fascinating. You've got yourself quite a challenge here. Uh, the um, hoop things that the cars are in, in the pictures, in the photos, mm -hmm. they are not going to remain or are they going to remain? They will not. They will, will not be, be remaining. Out. Can I, the pictures that you showed me of what you're doing on the building, I'm very impressed. You've done an awful lot in a very short period of time. So I think it stands in good stead of your plans for what you do intend to do. Um, I do think that if you don't really need it, that to take the um, truck body. Hmm. Thank you. That's the temporary. Yeah, trailer. temporary storage <laughs> away would be a, would be a big improvement. Um, and we're going to make that anyway. That's not my problem. The time frame and the barn, okay, because we, we, back to the design standards again. I'm a big design standard person, obviously, but I'm not going to try to put an inordinate amount of burden on you. Anything that you're doing is an improvement to what's there, but at the same time, let's do as much as we possibly can. So unless you have a long-range plan for that barn, I know you're going to take everything that's in it out, but the barn's going to continue to stay there, correct? You have no future plans for it at this point? Uh, no. No. I, I, I mean, future plans for the barn? Yes. Um, I, I, I might at some point, if, it, if I can get it structurally sound and, and, and we get, we, you know, I, I, okay. I mean, small storage. I hate to tear it down because then I'd have, uh, I don't think I really need to. I think I can fix it, but that's a whole different situation. Okay, then I would just like, somehow or another, we're going to have it written that, at a certain point in time, that storage container is going to be removed. I would like to also, and I don't know how to do this, to have it written in their approval that within a certain period of time, the building has to be made structurally sound. 
And then if you, because if you're looking at it and you decide that you really don't want to put in that kind of effort to make it structurally sound, then I'd like something written in that says it needs to come down within a certain period of time. If within that time you say, gee, I really like to have this, I might be able to use it in the future, then within a certain period of time it needs to be made structurally sound. Does that make sense? Um, yes, I, I guess, you know, I would like to understand a little bit more about structurally sound. Are we oh. talking about is it going to fall down on you or does it look nice? I think there's a... Uh, there's, there's it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be painted. It, it, yeah, and I guess that that's, that's sort of... That's I don't know what... I haven't been in the barn. I haven't. I don't sure. believe any of the code officers have mm -hmm. sort of been to the barn to know what type of condition it's in at all as a starting point. So I think if the board does have concerns, then it might be worth requesting additional evidence so we know what's happening out there. Um, I, I, I've learned uh, over the years that these kinds of things should not be left just hanging. Something needs to be said about yep. them, and I'm not really. Deter I'm not really concerned that there be a specific. You know, but it, if we're going to give them initial approval, I would like some mention of this to be in the initial approval. Yes, and, and I, I think it took me a moment to get there, but I will note um, one of the things that the code officers will do is go out on site when he, because he will ultimately need a certificate of occupancy. Right. So they will go on site to and walk through the barn and be sure that it is structurally sound, that it's that it's and if they go out suitable, and it's, and it's not, then then what? then that will be, we'll have to, he'll either have to, it's on the approved plan as it is, so he'll either have to bring it up so it's structurally sound, or if he's going to remove it, he'll come back to this board and amend his site plan to remove the and storage. And my only concern about that is that yeah. if there's a time frame where he, he's, he's going to be given, you say it's about a year before they have to worry about removing the... Um, storage container. So that'll be part of the performance guarantee. Right. So we and could this do the will same also thing. Be part of the performance right. so guarantee. If, if that's okay, so within a year he will have to you'll have to decide whether you are or are not going to repair the barn. And if not, then you have to come back to us. And if you are, then it, there's a certain period of time in which it needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Okay. That Just makes me content. Make sure we're speaking the same language here. My way I'm following this is that Jay, you're saying that that process is implicit in the CFO process, right? And it's not something that we would necessarily need to stipulate in a condition to an approval. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm fine, and we're all clear on what it means, right? <laughs> Sometimes it gets very confusing okay. to me. Okay, ding ding, different topic. Um, the gravel versus the uh, lawn. Does it matter to you? It, it always matters to me. Everything <laughs> matters to you. But I mean, should it be gravel? Um, I, I think it's something that's a small enough amount in the nuances of where the parking, I, like I think there's also comments in there about it looks like maybe some pavement goes a little farther and that's where staff had commented on, well, maybe some of that can get shrunk back. And I think you can balance the site. I think you're that close. I think okay. I think it's something we can, okay. we can do as staff. Good. Phew. I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you. This is the name of it. Keep it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Susan. Roger. What else is there to ask? <laughs> um, I actually, um, I think you've done a good job with the house so far. I noticed in the um, video up there that you've actually removed the shed and replaced it with a deck like on the side of the house. Yeah, actually, the, the, the deck was was there, kind of hidden. Okay. Around the shed. So okay. Yeah. Maybe there's something hidden on, in the barn too, right? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and the, the other concern I was I had was the um, the canopies over there in, in these these photos. Because he's not going to do it. The, the carport? Yeah. Yeah, they, they're yeah, going to they, be removed. Yeah, they're not going to be. I I was concerned that they might be near Payne Road or something like that. Um, the only uh, the only other question I had. Uh, I had basically no no other problems with anything other than the barn and where the, the role it plays in this whole scheme of things. I mean, if they, if he leaves it the way it is right now and then he decides to do something with it, does it just go to the building inspector and or, or does it have to come back here or what? I would think that if it would depend on how much that use departed from what we've already approved. Yeah, because I, I, I drove by the place and that barn looks like it's in pretty bad shape to me. 
the, the outside is in very tough shape. Yeah. He used a lot of different materials to cover his body. Right. I, yeah. yeah, right, exactly. Uh, I, I guess I'm all set then. If you guys are happy, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, just to start off, I uh, first of all commend you for, for uh, as Mr. Wood said, having the energy that, and the willingness to take this on and um, based on what, what we've seen so far with what you've done to the, to the, the property, I think that does bode well. Um, within that context, I, I don't have any issue with design um, and the architecture or the, any of the materials or anything like that um, for the design standards. Um, I'm fine with the gravel as well. I'm glad we got that talked through. Uh, just to clarify, um, I think you had said that um, after sort of mulling it over and realizing what would be entailed with the, um, keeping the storage trailer on site, that the plan is to remove it. Can you clarify or confirm that that is the intent? Because it does, when we get to potential conditional approval, yeah. there could be some implications for how that's worded. Yeah, to meet the standard, and I think it's a well-written standard, uh, we can't keep it. it. It would be too much work to patch the holes and paint it up. Okay. So, yeah, it, All if, right. if we could get a year, we'd, we'd very much appreciate that. Okay. Just wanted to confirm that. Okay. Thank you. Um, we talked about the barn and, and the mechanism for that. I think we're, we're set there. On signage, um, I think board members have seen the image that's up there now. Uh, is that is that, generally speaking, the intent of the design? Maybe you could talk to us a little bit about how definitive that is. And if so, perhaps we could just get a quick struggle here in terms of how folks feel about that and whether we would still want a, a revised or final design to come back to us. Jake. Here we go. I, I, met with, I met with Bruce Bailey, uh, owner of Bailey Sign. He came over on site, and we, we kind of brainstormed what would be a, a a catchy sign, and I spoke with uh, Brian Longstaff about what I was avail what, what I was allowed to do for a sign, uh, as far as side and setbacks. And uh, inside, inside the brick chimney that I will build will be a, a steel pole. It, 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 it might look very big right there. It's, all, it's 16 inches wide. That's 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 the the pillar. He, Bruce said, uh, Bruce Bailey said that the, a lot of pillars will be, you know, eight by eight. So it's going to be a little bit bigger than a, than a uh, than just a a, a pole sticking out of the ground with a sign on it, um, I, and there again, it, it'll look more like a like, like a chimney than that right there. I was kind of ashamed of what Bruce came up with for a chimney, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and it, he gave me just a quick uh, he gave me a quick quick little run, and that's so the the rod the, the iron will come out of the pole. It'll actually be there, and then I'll build around it. That that was the plan. I mean, I you know that that's. Um, he, he uh, we kind of brainstormed on it together just because it would be fitting. And, and if it, mm. you know, if, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it doesn't work, I mean, it, it'll be a, have a really, really big footing on it. You know, it'll have to be, it will be, it'll be built like actually like an outside chimney. It'll have a, you know, an oversized footing four mm -hmm. feet down and, and um, that type of stuff. We haven't, that was uh, just a real quick thing mm -hmm. he came up with just so I could give people an idea of what we were, what we were thinking about doing. But. He's some smoke. <laughs> I think that, I think that heads in the Vegas direction that Mike was concerned about. <laughs> um, well, Mike, not to put you on the spot, but I'll put you on the spot. Oh, that's all right. Uh, I, I mean, what, it's hard for me to see the numbers. Can you give me the height? Let me see if I can. Eight foot. Eight foot. I think, uh, generally speaking, I don't have any. I, I might, I might suggest that uh, it looks like a cinder block type of chimney, but uh, my thinking is you'd probably make it more like brick. It will be brick. Yeah. yeah. It'll be. Uh, it's a. It's a water struck antique looking brick. It, it'll mm -hmm. be. That'll be built. Um, and you'd light it from the ground. I, I, I haven't even gotten that far. To be honest mm -hmm. with you, okay. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, that, uh, I'm looking at it. I'm wondering if um, if it jumps out and tells me that, that it's kind of cute. It's a chimney. It, to me, it might end up looking more like just a structure to hold a sign. But um, I, I don't have any issues with what's in front of us right now, except the color, of course. But he's telling me it's going to be masonry. It's going to be brick. And I certainly welcome 
feedback from other board members. I, mean, I guess my feeling on it is given that this is, I think, pretty preliminary and basically kind of a brainstorm, I would lean toward maybe wanting to have it come back and take a look at a more fleshed out design. I mean, we're not to, we don't want to nitpick or micromanage or anything, um, but I just think in the spirit of what we usually try to do, I think, I think that would be appropriate and I think you seem to be thinking about it the right way. So, any other thoughts on that? Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I like the idea he's using some imagination, but again, it's, it's hard to really put alarms around it based on that alone. But I like the idea that you're using what kind of, you know, business it is and, and so forth, but that looks a little clearer. All right, Susan? I agree. I think that it's looking at it, Rick, it looks fine, but we'll wait until you come back. Okay. I might add, too, I, I see on the plan that you're proposing um, some ornamental grass in front of the uh, the structure of the sign, and that I, I like that idea because I think it, it kind of brings it down a little bit, you know. So, thank you. Well, with that, I think we've I think we've pretty much covered all the bases on this, and I I think I'm hearing that folks are prepared to consider a conditional approval tonight for this. So I would like to put that forward. I move to approve the application of Good Pain LLC. DBA atop chimney for the site plan approval to convert the existing non-conforming residential dwelling at 362 Payne Road into a commercial office with outdoor storage. This approval is conditioned upon the following items being resolved through the planning department prior to the issuance of a building permit. Number one, the applicant shall provide evidence that the gravel areas will meet the town standard as described in section 11.K2 of the zoning ordinance. Number two, the applicant will revise plans to identify removal for accessory storage container on site. Number three, the plan set is to be revised to address comments numbered four, five, six, seven, and eight of the staff memo. Number four, a note is to be added to the plan set describing the date and action taken by the Board of Appeals relative to the allowable outdoor storage associated with the proposed use. And number five, prior to the issuance of a sign permit, the applicant shall submit a sign rendering for board review and approval. That's the motion. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'll wait into this for a minute. Um, <clears throat> the first sentence was, uh, we were gonna approve something with commercial office space with outdoor storage. Is that really the case? The the vehicles are considered outdoor storage. Okay. That's one. Yeah. Two, back to the barn, which I really hesitate to open this can of worms. Given the stand design standards, is it wise to put a condition in here stating that the if they decide to keep the barn, it's got to look like the house? materials, colors, nothing? I mean, it, or are they going to come back to us saying, we are going to keep the barn mm -hmm. and we're going to review it again? <coughs> at, at this point, the way I would see the plans, they said that the barn's part of the site plan. Mm -hmm. Maintain the barn's part of the site plan and the barn is what the bar they haven't proposed any changes. So at this point, it's staff's assumption that the board is approving the barn as is where is. Okay. So if there's if there's other consideration by the board, then that needs as to be as long as it's structurally sound. As uh, correct. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any other? Yeah, comments? Cor Cor, I just said, could you could you reread the um, the sentence you um, <coughs> you read regarding the trailer removal of the trailer? Well, I think that's um, number. The applicant number two. It's a revised number two, uh, which is the applicant shall revise plans to identify the removal of the accessory storage container on site. Okay, so there's no need for a time element. That will be. That's just part of our administrative process. Okay. Um, it'll be part of that performance guarantee. If it's not gone by the time they seek CO, we will. Okay, fine. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Right. Any other discussion? All in favor? 
That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank Buck. you. <laughs> Item number six. Larry Scarborough, Inc. requests site plan amendment review for 10 Southgate Road, Assessor's Map U37, Lot 7. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. Let's see, the applicant is before the board for an after, fa after the fact approval of the addition of about 1,300 square feet of office space at 10 Southgate Road. Um, this office space was identified, board members might recall this was on, I think, two agendas ago. The applicant was before you with a small refrigeration unit addition. And as part of the plan said, it was identified that there was this new office space that hadn't been approved. So. Um, that was a bit of a hiccup in the works, and so now they're before you to talk about that office space. Um, staff did note that back in 2010, uh, the site received a significant uh, site plan amendment approval for about a 2,200 square foot, um, uh, I'm sorry, 22,000 square foot addition. Um, and so at that point, a number of the site elements were brought up to, to speed in terms of lighting, additional landscaping, stormwater, um, and sort of the, the layout that you see before you. Um, so uh, let's see, given that, staff provides some comments with regards to uh, where this uh, office space is really on existing uh, paved area, it's really about ensuring that the site is maintaining uh, adequate parking and just be sure we're going through the right calculation iterations of the use of the building to be sure parking is still um, standards are being met. Um, I guess also a bit of clarification just to ensure that it's, it's clear for the record if this is sort of temporary office space or, or permanent office space because as, as is noted in our plans the, the tenant Allaire is taking over this, this building used to be divided into two tenant spaces one was a, a much smaller tenant space um, along sort of what we're looking at the right side of the uh, of the building um, and the layers taking over that site so the question was is this sort of just until that area is brought you know you know uh, completed or not um, so uh, there's that question um, and then just some other staff notes with regards to uh, plan clarity um, again for the record and so everyone knows exactly what's happening on site um, should future questions arise. So with that, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Jay. I'll turn over to the applicant. Uh, good evening. I'm Norm Chamberlain with Walsh Engineering Associates. Uh, we're representing Alaire Scarborough, the applicant. Um, as Jay said, we were uh, looking to add a cooler to the site um, and just open the can of worms. The, the applicant had um, moved this trailer in here last spring. Uh, they were having some uh, difficulties with office space inside. They're basically growing production and that was moving people out. So they, they moved a few people into the, uh, this building um, and they just went ahead and did it. Um, we apologize for that. Um, they, they are still considering the cooler. They're actually considering the cooler along with probably about 36,000 square feet of uh, uh, manufacturing uh, production off and office space um, and that may be coming along here in the next um, month or two um, but we just wanted to get this cleared up now and get it off the table so that there's there's no issues with the after the fact on the trailer uh, Allaire doesn't have an issue with parking uh, most of their building is used for production so it's it's fewer people and spread out um, if you go there pretty much any time of day, you'll you'll see many many open parking spaces on site. Um, based on our usage uh, requirement, we we need about 273 spaces. I think they have 315 on site now, including the satellite lot on the other side of um, Southgate. Um, so currently, parking isn't an issue. Um, we've done our preliminary plans for this future edition and we, we don't think we'll have an, uh, a parking issue with that uh, in the future, but that's not before you right now. Um, like I said, we're just trying to clean this up and, and get, get them square with the town and we'll be coming back for any future development. That's pretty much it. That's it. All right. Thank and you. Anyway, as as uh, Jay said, this is 
it's built over existing pavement. There really wasn't any change to stormwater runoff uh, from the site. All right, thank you. I'd like to invite any public comment. All right, seeing none. Ron, would you like to start on this one? Yeah, I, I really don't have any problems with this, and I understand that, uh, you know, it's just a clarification. I don't see any ill intent, uh, you know, uh, it, it, as far as the applicant is concerned, and uh, I have no no problem getting this off the table. Thanks, Ron. Nick? No. Thanks. All right. Mike? Yeah, I don't see any problem with it. I mean, it's portable, right? Pardon? It's portable. That's right. The wheels are still on it, but it's up on blocks, and it's got a skirt, you know, so it looks nice. Um, they have... Uh, uh, gotten a quote on getting this the building sprinkled so that'll be taken care of with a uh, fire department so your intention is to keep it for a while anyway it's going to be kept until they get the new building online which would probably be about this time next year if everything goes according to preliminary plans and this this doesn't represent any additional demand like 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 you spoke of no there are they're expanding production inside, and that takes up a lot more room than right. office. So, um, and you know, even though they took over the the second tenant space, there that isn't quite ready yet. So <coughs> they've got to have some place for people. Uh, they're they're growing leaps and bounds here. So, just like our schools, mm -hmm. the portable classrooms. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. All right, I have no problem with it. Thank you. No one calls them temporary anymore. That's right. Yeah. They're not oh, exterior. Is it? No, I have no. Um, this is. Does this have water, sewage, etc.? No, it does et cetera, not. Et I have no problems. Just electricity. Yeah, I have no problems with this. All right. Thanks, Roger. Um, I have no problems either. Other than I just have a question regarding you. You referred to a new building. Is that the other part of this building, or? They're they're looking to add on to this building okay. to add production, cooler <coughs> space. Okay. Uh, I'm fine. Thank you. And. Uh, Oh, okay. Mike, did you have something else? Well, I was just, uh, can you tell us what a lair does? Thank you. They make um, medical tests. So little little kits that doctors buy and they test for whatever. Yeah, thank you. All right. Medical. Yeah. Or whatever. Thank you. Um, likewise, likewise, I don't have any issues with this. It's pretty straightforward. Um, there's a, an observation that really does seem like there's a lot of demand for this type of space in the industrial districts based on the agendas we've been seeing lately. So um, I guess that's a good thing. With that, I will put a motion forward. I move to approve the application of Valera Scarborough, Inc. for the after-the-fact site plan amendment at 10 Southgate Road for the addition of approximately 1,354 square feet of office space. The approval is Approval is conditioned upon the applicant providing evidence and materials through the planning department to address remaining comments and staff memos prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy for the site. I'll second. I have a second. Any discussion? Um, yeah, I have a question. It says prior to the occupancy, and they are occupying it now? They are. <laughs> so how does that fit in the word? Yeah, prior to the <laughs> certificate <laughs> of occupancy, so they are they are occupying it at their own risk at this point. Okay, all right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Good, I'm good. question. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. All right. Yeah. Any other discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Item number seven, Bessie Square LLC requests site plan amendment review for 264 U.S. Route 1, Assessor's Map U41, Lot 1. Jay. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as just noted, this is a site plan amendment review for Bessie Square development, which is across the street here from Town Hall, um, where there is the second of what was three previously approved buildings on the site. The applicant is, was actually before this board back in, I think, August or September with a sketch plan review 
talking about some modifications to that plan to ultimately remove one of the buildings and do some sort of split level parking uh, in that area. So they're now before the board with a formal application to that regards. Um, you know, by and large, you know, staff uh, obviously reviewed the plans. The removal of the of the structure obviously decreases some of the impacts of the site um, in terms of uh, traffic and sort of carrying capacity, if you will. However, there are definitely some um, uh, plan details that we want to be sure are addressed moving forward that um, the, the capacity of stormwater and, and those type of engineering details are adequately addressed moving forward. Um, uh, I think additionally, you know, we, we have some staff notes here regarding sort of parking calculations and traffic impact fees um, and those sorts of things that really, again, we recognize that they're going to be lesser and, or, or there will be more parking available per the uses on site, but we just want to be sure the plan that the file is, um, is, is uh, clear moving forward. Um, so we just look for some more detail on that. Um, really in terms of design and impact, um, in terms of um, uh, sort of the use of the site, uh, you know, there's two major things that really for the board to consider in terms of the, the prior approval had a, a building sort of at the end of the site, sort of uh, providing that sort of terminus, if you will. Now it's going to be landscaping. Is the board satisfied with the proposed plan? And then it might be worth a consideration, um, and this really came up in our interdepartment review meeting about maybe some wayfinding sign signage, particularly for folks who might be coming out of the lower level parking area, to really try to direct them to the Ward Street access so they don't try to maybe navigate to Route 1 through, through and in front of the buildings. Um, and maybe, you know, um, some other clarifying, just so folks know that the parking behind the church area in this lower level exists, because some people might get confused when they come on site, because it's not sort of your traditional parking field that we often see. So um, again, uh, I think there's a number of comments here in terms of uh, sort of the engineering details. I know Angela could answer if board members have clarifying questions around those as well. So with that, I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jay. And I'll turn it over to Ms. Taylor. Thank you very much. My name is Cindy Taylor and I'm representing Bessie Square LLC this evening. Um, we own this property and we also own the property adjacent to it, which is the Bessie Commons. Um, I was here uh, a short period of time ago before we um, actually started construction of Building A, and I think you're all familiar with the building that's currently under construction. So we have approached this site plan um, based on all of the prior approvals. So we, ha we aren't really asking for any um, changes in stormwater. Our Bill Bray did an update on our um, traffic before we actually started on Building A. Um, so we have not included anything like that because we're not asking for additional changes in or modifications to the original approvals. The, um, the entire site was built out. So all of the parking was laid out. Um, even the, uh, there are all the site lighting is in place for the parts that are currently being used. The, the parking lot at the rear or the lower level, I'm going to refer to it as the lower level, those, there are bollards down there for the lights that were approved in the original proposal and our plan is to continue with that with the same light fixture that was originally approved. So um, it may seem like we are modifying this to a great deal, but what I'm really trying to do is just take out the foundation that is there terrace it, make it look nice with nice landscaping, and make the transition by a, a fairly wide stair to, to uh, make it easy for people to get from the lower parking lot primarily to the restaurant O'Reilly's Cure. Um, and I think we're, uh, we're very proud of the fact that the O'Reilly's are doing this restaurant. They're wonderful people. They live here in town. Uh, I, ca I can't tell you how wonderful it's been to work with them to, um, to bring this to fruition. And our building is probably 85% complete at this point. So our goal is to be completed 100% by the end of September. And so one of the most important pieces here tonight is to see if we can move this parking area um, forward so that it can be done at the same time. Um, I, so in, I think that it may lead to some confusion, but I think that uh, we're really looking at just the middle building. And I was here before 
and we tried to do a deck on top of that foundation, but it was impossible. Financially, it was it was going to cost three quarters of a million dollars, and I was only going to net out about eight spaces. So that just was not even a, a, a it was a non-starter. And so we have gone back and gone to this redesign, um, and we've gone from 86 parking spaces to 110 total on our on this site. Um, and I think that will really behoove us. I think I can safely say I'd like to introduce two people that I have with me tonight. I have Andrew Johnston from from Stantec, who is our civil engineer and who, who has done most of these plans here, um, along with George Levine of CWS Architects that's doing the architecture on the existing building that's under construction. And he has helped us do the design work on the terracing. And then I have a landscape architect that has worked with us to do these plantings. And I think it, I think it will be pretty significant when it's completed. But the, um, the, the other important piece to this from my standpoint is, you know, the terracing will only be seen from the lower parking lot for the majority of the public, but I plan to build another building behind this, so it's really, it's critical, in my opinion, that this whole aesthetic appeal um, is seen from Bessie Commons. So again, that's why we've put the time and effort into this, the way it, it shows with this landscaping. So I think that being said, I, um, I think the, the stormwater uh, question is, is a non-issue in terms of c capacity. This, we've been operating this for over three years now. We've never had a problem with it. Um, the stormwater facility is off-site. Actually, Cherry Anderson owns it. It's um, down the street. It's part of a stormwater detention area that the town of Scarborough actually uses as well. And we are working with Terry to make sure that that um, meets our needs and his needs and the town of Scarborough. Uh, but I'm going to let, uh, if, there, if there are any other questions, I'm going to defer that to Andrew Johnston to um, take that up with you. I, I think that um, I've tried to cover most of the issues. I know that you've got a letter there from Woodard and Curran. And uh, as I read through those comments, um, it sounded like they were starting from ground zero, and I know this has been, uh, this was uh, approved back in 2006 and 2007, so uh, I'm sure that whoever was doing that review didn't realize all the things that had already been approved and that were not being changed. So we're um, working with Jay on that, and uh, if there are wayfinding issues on the signage, I'm happy to do that. Uh, I don't see that as a problem there, it's, but we're, you know, it'd be easy to put a couple of small signs in. We currently have a sign at the parking lot to the rear on Ward Street that identifies the Scarborough Grounds entrance for their um, drive through And so I think we would do something at a similar scale, um, low, low signage, very in keeping with pedestrian scale and uh, not overpowering. So um, I'm happy to uh, take any questions that you all might have. Um, there was another question that uh, related to our some of the things that are being done in our in Building A uh, that have already been reviewed by the code of enforcement officials. The sanitary district has approved it, um, and we've paid all our fees there. So I don't know that there is anything else um, th on that uh, review letter from Woodard and Kern that needs to be addressed. But I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay. Should I just um, have Andrew walk you through this plan so that it may become clearer? Or do you need anything on it? Um, I guess I would say we can see if folks have questions, and okay. and then Andrew can get up and walk us through if necessary. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and just for the record, uh, we do have the opportunity for public comment on this. I don't see anyone, so, so we will move to board discussion. Uh, Mike, would you like to start off? Uh, sure. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Mike. Glad to see you again. Nice to see you. Thank um, you. Yeah, this is exciting to watch this um, um, be completed. It's been a long time where it was just that one building. Now, when you ca when you talk about Building A, it's the one that's under construction right now, correct? That's correct. Building C was the one that was built prior with Scarborough Grounds in it. Building A is the one that's currently under construction, and Building B is the one that we want to remove. Right. Okay. Um, I remember this approval way back uh, when Kerry developed this, I think it was. Um, and uh, although it met our uh, 
our uh, our guidelines. Um, I always thought the uh, the site was going to be uh, was going to be challenged at times with traffic circulation and parking. So frankly, I'm quite pleased to see that uh, Building B is not going to be built and in, in in its place. If I if I maybe I'm oversimplifying it, but in its place, essentially, will be parking, additional parking, and uh, and landscaping. That's correct. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm looking at the plans, and like you said in the beginning, or one of somebody said in the beginning, uh, this is less than what was already approved, and what was already approved met the standard. So um, when we're talking about less, we're talking about less demand on the infrastructure, less demand, less traffic, more parking. So I can't see this as being anything other than uh, than good, really, from from that perspective. Um, the wayfinding. I think is a great idea. Um, I think it was uh, it was a few weeks ago. Um, I was driving south on Route One past Town Hall, and I looked over, and Scarborough Police were working with uh, a um, a vehicle operator who had, I think, tried to go out the wrong exit. way. Right. Do you remember that? Uh, no, I don't. But oh. there is signage there. You cannot exit to the south far from right. the um, main entrance here. So you Maybe have to take the right-hand turn. Or something. Yeah, <laughs> there is a sign there. <laughs> Whether people follow it is another question. But that right. one is identified. Uh, so I, I think that um, anything that we can do to to, to aid the public and uh, making sure they find their way um, would probably be a good thing. I don't have any ideas on that matter other than I would endorse any kind of uh, additional effort to see if we can help folks. Um, because uh, it's not always, I think, easy when you're at Building C to realize that if you go around the building, you would go out Ward Street. I think it, it's awfully convenient to just look at Route 1 as the logical way out. Um, but that's really the only thing I have to add. Uh, the landscaping looks quite generous, and uh, obviously I've seen the product, uh, the results of your work before, so I have no hesitation. In, uh, in endorsing this and uh, looking forward to uh, the tenant, O'Reilly. O'Reilly's Cure, is that what it's called? That's correct. And the, and the top floor is going to be uh, office? Rental? Well, I think I can publicly say this. Um, it's going to be CWS architects that are oh. going to take over the top floor. Oh, very good. Okay. So we're very excited about that. Excellent. So you're all set with tenants and I good am. to go. I am. Very good. So. Nothing more to add, Corey, and um, good luck, Cindy. Nice Thank to you. see you again. The only thing I'd like to add is um, in our leases, we um, specify where uh, our tenants are parking, so it's only the public that we're concerned about, and so I think we can do the wayfinding um, signage very easily. That, that rear parking along, uh, you know, going out toward Street will be pr basically reserved for uh, tenants of Building C, and then we'll ask the restaurant uh, employees and staff of the uh, architectural firm to park at the rear when they're there, so. Okay, good, thank you. Thanks. Nick? I don't have much left to comment on other than we finally have a restaurant with enough parking. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good luck. Thanks. Thank you. Ron? Yeah. I did pick up, though, you did say that you intend to put another building in. Oh, oh I, can, do you mind if I show you right now? I just brought a concept. Sure, I think it would be helpful, the, the broader context, in case there's any confusion. Yeah, this is, um, so, um, by orientation here, this is our parking lot that we're talking about expanding. It um, has not been updated, but uh, this parking here is part of uh, our Bessie Commons. Um, and uh, Bessie School Drive is, is here coming up and turning and then people will be able to return to that street again. But we would like to add uh, another 34 units in here. And I, I know this isn't on the agenda tonight, but I just, you know, before we were talking about closing off the, the terminus, as uh, Jay mentioned before, but since we're now doing parking and it's going to be parking for restaurant use and so forth and um, some nighttime use, I've made a decision that it would be better to move the senior housing complex back on the site a little bit more. And one of the things that I find it's really important, and we have it at Bessie and it works really well, is to give people parking that they can enter at different places along the building so that people don't have to walk so far to one, mm -hmm. one central uh, entrance or the main entrance. 
So here we, we're going to frame the view with our landscaping and so forth. It's going to come up to a relatively small um, appendage of the building. It'll be two stories with a community space, and that will be the public entrance. But then the parking goes back along each side, and people who live there can actually enter in different doorways um, and have access to their units. So conceptually, I just wanted to share with you this is different than what I had shown before. Um, and I'm open to any concepts or ideas that you have, but um, I think we'll just leave the commercial space separate, give this space a little more privacy as residential. It's easy walking. It's still going to be a benefit to the people that will live there for the commercial and vice versa. But just, I just wanted Thanks. to share that with you. So the key thing for right now is that it's, it's not part of this. Yeah, I understand. I just heard the third building. Uh, Another comment from staff was the detention pond. What, where do we, is that what you were alluding to before, that all of that had been approved and so that forth? That is correct, yes. Yeah. That all of the stormwater runoff calculations and everything were part of the original approval. And we've just uh, you know, assumed that we're going to um, decrease that at this point in time, so we haven't gone into any great level of detail on, the, on that. Uh, my last question, do you have any target date as to when? Building A will be done? I do. It'll, it's going to be done uh, September 31st. Opening date, October 1. Thank you. I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Susan? Like everything you do, it's some professional. Thank you. Thank you. We're very, very pleased to have you doing this in Scarborough. And I agree with Mike in that the loss, quote unquote, of building. B, it's a blessing. I think it's going to not only make it easier, but much more attractive. Um, I do want to just ask, where does it say here? Oh, um, with, the, with the fact that that building is coming down as you drive in, it's hard for me to tell from the landscaping what you have planned for me to see as I drive down between the two buildings. I mean, is it going to be, it's going to be landscaped, but it is, you know, what you'll see is, you'll see this is going to be a sidewalk and a patio that will be finished, um, and then you'll see a slight raised wall here that's already there. This wall will, ret it's a retaining wall mm -hmm. that will stay in place, and the landscaping in front of that will just soften that edge. Okay. And then... That particular patio, we we hope to have um, part of the, it will be outdoor space for tenants because the restaurant will have their outdoor space at the front of their building, but we'll have some probably some comfortable chairs and things out there for people who actually work on the site. Does that require any kind of special permitting? It doesn't, does it? Uh, if the board's comfortable with that use, no. 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 It was actually, I would say if it was part of like a restaurant, um, you know, if it was restaurant seating, then it would because we'd take a look at parking calculations. But if it's really just sort of communal open space, uh, a good example is actually the um, Starbucks and, and uh, um, uh, Bitterford Savings Bank site. There's a little outdoor seating. So Starbucks has its own mm -hmm. seating, but mm -hmm. then there's another additional sort of public seating area for folks who are walking okay, by the site. So. Fine. And yep. it may be just people, you know, who are there stopped as they come up the stairs and, right. you know, just it's down for a minute. A <laughs> gathering spot, right. A gathering spot. Okay. But we have, a, we have a major tree at the top to sort of uh, break that concrete, and then we've got some upright nice, we've got beautiful, beautiful light fixtures out there, and we're, we're continuing with those. So um, I, I think what you'll see when you drive in is you'll, You'll just see a, a line of landscaping along the concrete wall. Okay, so this is me going on record as saying, as the landscape lady, I am happier than I've been in probably two years <laughs> with landscaping. This is what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to, you know, you're, you're supposed to be drawn into a site by its landscaping. So thank you for doing that. You're welcome. Um, I would like to just point out, I know staff is on top of this, but when we do the draft motion. I want to agree that I think that what Woodward and Curran, unless there's something specific in here that I've missed, I don't think that they're asking for anything that hasn't already been done. Right. It's really, and, and maybe Angela can speak to this more than I can, but I think it's really around plan clarity, just understanding no, what... I understand, yeah. yeah. Yep. 
Because the, the one I have two, two marks on is that it's not clear what the specific improvements have already been made and that we need to have clear plans showing the existing conditions currently, the original and the completed. Yeah, I wasn't clear. I mean, it, you've seen in the plans that we did uh, submit, mm -hmm. there's an outline around the specific area where we are making changes. So um, I, 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 think, I think it's pretty clear. I went back and looked at that and went over it with Jay, but um, if, what do you think? I guess I would I would say that um, like you said there's some clarification things that are fine but there are some um, I guess small items that just for staff to clarify that need to, that should probably be in the water and current such as erosion and sediment control on the site when you're down there things like that there is um, the retaining wall, I know you have that first piece that's existing, but isn't the lower one a new that would need a, a it would need a design, and that's part of their comment. It's, it's things that can be addressed, the, uh, but shouldn't be eliminated, I guess. Yeah, I'll let Andrew speak to that design on that wall, but um, what we have done for erosion control, the whole site is built mm -hmm. out. It's not like we're starting from, you know, ground right. zero where we have a lot of exposed, although we have sand around our building now, but um, we've been working with uh, both the sanitary district and the um, public works to make sure that we have um, adequate control on the catch basins. We'll continue to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't see any, beyond that, I don't see any real need for erosion control. So we'll continue that and we'll go over it with you anytime, Angela. Right. And I, I guess one of the comments too in the Woodrow and Kern, and this is like small details that I guess we usually don't touch upon. That's why I just, just hesitate about eliminating it completely is that some of the infrastructure was put in many years ago with, when building C went in, like the under drain, things like that. So part of Winter and Kern's comments is more about making sure those get cleaned out and flushed out and that can be all part of this project. So I'm just a little hesitant about, I don't think it's a big obstacle for, for them to do unless they say differently. I think it's just things that just need to be checked off yeah. Staff, and we and we did that as part of the building a construction, and mm -hmm. we've had that reviewed a couple of times. We have a structural engineer who's working with us on the um, retaining wall part portion. But um, you want to speak to the the wall itself? Well, excuse me, may I interrupt? Go ahead, because sir. I'm the one that was making the point to begin okay. with. So if I can respond to my own request, <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, having heard what I was just told by our town engineer. I think that the way that this draft motion is written is just fine because if there are any op if there are any not yet covered items in the Woodward and Curran, staff will work it out with the applicant. We don't have to be involved in this. So I'll just take what I, my question back. This is me pulling it back. Chrissy? The only thing I, I might add is uh, that sometimes within this context, address means just sort of clarify or check off, make sure it's already been covered right. elsewhere. Doesn't necessarily mean more physical yep. work or on site work, although sometimes <coughs> there are some recommendations in there. In the meantime, thank you very much. It's very exciting. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Roger? Uh, thank you. Um, I, would, I would agree with all the comments uh, that have been made so far. I, I think what you've done at Bessie Commons is terrific. and and I see no reason why it won't continue. Um, the only thing I would suggest, uh, like Jay mentioned, the uh, finding signage or mm -hmm. the directional signage, I don't know how you feel about that, but uh, for instance, on Ward Street, when you're heading south on Route 1, mm -hmm. uh, is there any signage right there now indicating you can get into the place instead of waiting yeah. to kind of cross lanes? Because there's a light there, isn't there? Well, there's nothing at the intersection to indicate that there's a second access point to yeah. our um, facility, but there is a sign on Ward Street that indicates that Scarborough Grounds has a drive-through that they can access when you go down Ward Street and you turn into the parking lot. Okay. But there's nothing at the intersection. Were you thinking of something there that would be, that well, would be uh, unusual to do something off-site? I just, uh, you know, looking at the... Um, the print here, uh, for instance, just just as an aside, when you go in to go to um, the drive-through for the coffee, yeah. mm -hmm. it looks like you can only, according to this print here, you can only go in and you have to head north on Route One. You, there, that's only one way. It's only one car yeah. width, and you ha when you drive through the drive-through, you have to continue an exit. Right. right? 
um, it, I, I don't know, it, it is challenging um, on the, uh, regarding the traffic, internal traffic, I think. Uh, um, it's probably more challenging right now just because of the construction, but I think it will be pretty clear after the fact. There is a sign right there, um, Roger, that says that um, this is the access for the drive-through. Mm -hmm. So that, I think, you know, maybe, I think where we need more wayfinding uh, information is um, right at the head of the access to the lower parking lot. Okay. And I would think that would be easy to put the signage there. Okay. Um, um, I have no further questions. Uh, I, I think it's terrific, and I, I know the, the citizens of Scarborough are, are glad the elevator has been closed in. <laughs> Thank you, Roger. Uh, just to pick up, first of all, on the wayfinding theme, um, I think something along the lines of what you seem to be envisioning would be great. You know, something that's kind of fairly subtle, but that gets the gets the point across. Another thought might be, and given particularly given the fact that a business like Scarborough Rounds in particular, and hopefully the, the new um, restaurant and pub will be along the same lines, has a lot of repeat customers, so it might be helpful to, and this is just a suggestion, um, to have some, some sort of signage or flyers available in the business that say, you know, did you know that you can also park back here or that you can access this? I, I know just from my own anecdotal experience that, um, you know, not everyone seems to realize that. And after you've been there a few times, you sort of figure it out. And sometimes I feel like I'm the only one who uses that word light. Um, and I, I think one of the more common movements that I see is people coming out of the drive through turning left, um, which there is a sign there. That Which I know that I know there's a sign. Exactly, I know there's a sign. Um, so and it's there's only so much you can control, but that's just a totally informal suggestion that um, as as things are in flux, it might be helpful just to post something like that. Usually, you see it in businesses telling people not to park in a neighbor's lot, but I think it might actually be the reverse uh, issue here with the, the church, where I think a, a lot a lot of people may not realize that some that that parking is available. Um, we currently allow the church to use that parking lot on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but I didn't know. Go ahead. Never mind. That's not, that's not, uh, you know, it's an unwritten, it may have to sure. change, but it's, you know, I want to be a good neighbor. Sure, sure. Um, but beyond that, I mean, I, I think uh, my fellow board members, it's obviously great that you're, you're uh, accommodating more parking and um, not putting more undue pressure on the site. Um, one question I had about the lower parking lot, am I correct in reading that there are no handicapped spaces down there or no ramp coming up? No. I thought there that everything, that those are closer to the That's correct. buildings? Yeah, all of our required handicap are at the upper level. Okay, I just wanted to make, put that out there and make sure that that was all covered. Yeah, yeah okay. definitely. Can I just make a comment about the signs and is that we had one sign at the gas station that said no left turn so I, we had another one at my, and I watch people just take that left turn. You just cannot legislate or sign stupidity. Uh, still taking that left turn during those hours. So even with two signs sticking them right in the face. So yep, whatever true. you can do, we'd appreciate. We might have to have a valet out there. I don't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, did you have yeah. anything else? Uh, I just mean, Roger? Yeah, the only reason I brought up that whole signage thing is because Oak Hill is such a, you know, kind of a dangerous area. I mean, you've got guys crossing lanes all over the place up there um, and all the, all the different uh, routes there. I, I did have one last question, though. When you were here before, did you, did you indicate that you were going to have access to, uh, from this site to um, Bessie Commons? We do have access. Okay. And what about uh, Eastern? Eastern Village, is there going to be anything down, going down there? Is there any connection? We don't have a connection at okay, this point. Right. Um, it's woods, um, and it's quite, there's quite a drop-off at the end of okay. that, oh, that former baseball field, yeah. but um, that's not to say that at some point we can't. Okay, just curious. Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't think I have any other comments that haven't already been addressed. Um, I, I did appreciate the little sneak peek we got of the potential Bessie Commons. Days, and we'll look forward to hopefully seeing that fairly soon. 
But for now, um, I will move to approve the application of Bessie Square LLC for site plan amendment for the eliminate, elimination of Building B and the addition of lower level parking and landscaping. The approval is conditioned upon the applicant providing evidence and materials through the planning department to address remaining comments in the staff and Woodard and Curran memos prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy for the site. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Yay. Good luck. Item number eight, as mentioned, was tabled. So we'll move on to town planner's report. Do we have one? What's uh, the report on our town planner? Yeah, yeah. so the report on town planner is back to work. He's back today and seemed worked a full full day. So he's well well on the mend, I think. Um, so pan management is his biggest item right now. So, um, And on that point, uh, if you recall, at the last meeting, that we were going to have a presentation on our complete streets. Um, but that got tabled due to um, the lateness of the hour. And so um, just wanted to put out to the board that, again, with, with Mr. Bacon uh, recovering, that we're thinking about holding a workshop in either our, our second meeting in August, which would be August 29, or a meeting in September. And just wanted to get a feel from board members if one was better than the other, understanding that August can be vacation time or what have you. So. You don't have to let me know right now. If you could just send an email, I'll send a reminder out if, if one of those date, two dates is better. But we'd like to get to that um, in the next meeting or, or two or three meetings, not the next things. meeting. Um, so that is what I have to report Thank on. You Thank you. Things. Is there an administrative amendment report? Do not have anything to report. Any planning board correspondence? I have a question. Well, you did. You should have received uh, at your place there a, an email um, from the chair of the Conservation Commission at the board's request. They reviewed the subdivision that's off of New Road, um, so they provided comments to that end. Um, and so uh, those have been provided to you. And when that application comes back to you, we'll provide those again so they're okay. fresh. But and actually, I would anticipate you'll be seeing that very soon anyway, but um, just wanted to let you know that that question. review has occurred. Thank you. Thank you. That is all I have for correspondence. Anyone else have any correspondence? No? Planning board comments? Um, I have a couple. One, I'd like to wish our town planner, Dan Bacon, continued recovery. Hope to see him back soon. Um, I'd like to also thank Ron for uh, pinch hitting for me at the last meeting and thank him in advance for filling in for me at the next meeting, <laughs> which I believe is August 8th. Um, had a long planned vacation and um, he I guess I'll miss you. But, um, thank you for, uh, for filling in. Anything else? That I will move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Thank you.